Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to go over 5 worked examples to show you how to do problems involving angular displacement, velocity and acceleration. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic and that way you'll be able to apply what you learned there to this video. So let's get started. Question 1 says to convert the following from degrees into radians. So we have 7 parts A through to G and part A says 180 degrees. So 180 degrees in radians is pi radians which is the same as 3.14 radians. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians and that is the same as 6.28 radians. So 2 pi radians is the same as 1 complete revolution, 1 full circle in angular motion. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians which is the same as 1.57 radians. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians which is 1.05 radians. 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians which is the same as 0.52 radians. 14 degrees is 0.24 radians and 1 degree is 0.02 radians. Question 2 says to convert the following from radians to degrees. So we've got again 7 parts A through to G and all we're doing in this question is the opposite to question 1 so this time we're converting from radians back into degrees. So we've got pi radians for part A which is 180 degrees. For part B we've got 2 pi radians that's the same as 360 degrees. For part C we've got half pi radians so that's pi over 2 radians which is the same as 90 degrees. For part D we've got 1 radian and that's the same as 57.3 degrees. Remember that's the relationship in the notes that can help you convert between the two. For part E we've got 5 radians and that's the same as 286.5 degrees. For part F we've got 0.1 radians which is 5.73 degrees and lastly part G we get 0.01 radians which is the same as 0.57 degrees. Question 3 says that a bike wheel spins 60 times in 20 seconds. Calculate the angular displacement and the angular velocity. Now for part A the angular displacement theta, the way we can find this is using this part of the question here where it talks about the wheel spinning 60 times. So what we can say for this is that theta is equal to 60 revolutions because in this case one spin of the bike wheel will be one full circular motion which is one revolution. So one revolution remember in radians is the same as two pi radians. So that is one complete circle, one complete rotation. So all we need to do is times our 60 by two pi radians and we get 120 pi radians which gives us 377 radians. And notice that we're just using rad for short. For part b to calculate the angular velocity we can use this relationship here for the angular velocity omega. So we have omega equals d theta by dt but we can generalize this to omega equals theta over t. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find the angle of velocity omega. We know that theta is equal to 377 radians from part A and the time is 20 seconds as given in the question. So writing down our equation, we have omega equals theta over t and substituting in the numbers gives us 377 divided by 20 which when put into your calculator gives 18.9 radians per second. Question 4 says that a wheel at rest starts to spin, it reaches 60 radians per second after 5 seconds. Calculate the angular acceleration of the wheel. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the angular acceleration alpha. We know that the initial angular velocity omega 1 is equal to 0 radians per second. We know the final angular velocity omega 2 is equal to 60 radians per second and the time is 5 seconds as given in the question. So writing down our equation for angular acceleration, remember alpha equals d omega by dt and that means the rate of change of the angular velocity and notice that this d omega term on the top is the same as the change in omega, the change in angular velocity. So that's why we've got two angular velocities here, a 60 and a 0. So we've got that this equals 60 minus 0 divided by 5. We could do the same for the time and have a t1 and t2 but in this case our t1 would just be 0 as well. So that would just give us 60 divided by 5 which gives us an answer of 12 radians per second squared. The last question, question 5, says that the disc on an orbital sander is making 510 revolutions per minute when it is switched off and slows to rest in a time of 4.0 seconds. Part A says to calculate the angular velocity of the disc before it is switched off. Well to find the angular velocity we first need to find the angular displacement and we're told in the question that we have 510 revolutions per minute but remember that is not the angular displacement because the angular displacement needs to be in radians. So we have that theta is equal to 510 revolutions per minute and if we want to convert from revolutions per minute into radians per minute first of all then remember we can times by 2 pi because 1 revolution is the same as 2 pi radians one complete circle. So if we times 510 by 2 pi radians then we get 3204.4 radians per minute. Now remember we're trying to find angular velocity so we want radians per second not radians per minute. So writing down what we know from the question 
We're trying to find the angle of velocity omega. We know that the angular displacement is 3204.4 radians and we know that 60 seconds are in one minute. So using our equation of omega equals theta over t, remember this is just the same as omega equals d theta by dt, but it's just a generalized form of it. And we can then sub in our numbers and we get 3204.4 divided by 60. Putting that into your calculator, you should get 53.4 radians per second. Now the reason we've used a time of 60 seconds and not the 4.0 seconds from the question is because in part A we're concerned about the disc before it is switched off, but this time of 4 seconds given in the question is actually the time taken for the disc to slow to rest. So we're actually looking before that time, so we cannot use that time of 4 seconds in this calculation. And we therefore used 60 seconds because we had radians per minute and we wanted to convert that into radians per second. So part B says calculate the angular acceleration of of the disc as it slows. So now we can use that time of 4.0 seconds. So we're trying to find the angular acceleration. The final angular velocity omega is equal to 0 radians per second. The initial angular velocity omega naught is equal to 53.4 radians per second and the time is 4.0 seconds. Now writing down the equation for angular acceleration, remember that is equal to d omega by dt. So expanding this equation now to write it in terms of the initial and angular velocity, we have that this equals omega minus omega naught over t. Now notice the similarity between this equation for angular acceleration and the one for linear acceleration a equals v minus u over t. It's very similar. Now we can just sub in our numbers, so we have 0 minus 53.4 divided by 4.0 gives us an answer of minus 13.3 radians per second squared. Now notice we've got a negative answer because the disc is slowing down, so it must be decelerating, so we must have a negative answer. Part C says how many revolutions are made by the disc as it slows to rest? Well, the first thing we need to do is find the angular displacement theta. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the angular displacement. We know that the initial angular velocity is 53.4 radians per second. We know that the final angular velocity is 0 radians per second. The angular acceleration is minus 13.3 radians per second squared and remember it's negative because the disc is slowing down and lastly the time is 4.0 seconds. So putting a star next to theta because that's the one we're trying to find. Now here we could use any equation of angular motion that has theta in it so let's just use theta equals omega naught t plus a half alpha t squared and we can substitute in our numbers. So we have 53.4 times 4.0 plus a half times minus 13.3 times 4.0 squared. Don't forget the negative sign there as that will affect your answer. And this is equal to 107.2 radians. Notice that we're not finished yet because the question asks for how many revolutions and we've only found out the angular displacement so far. So to find out how many revolutions are made by the disc as it slows to rest, we can divide the angular displacement that we've found by the angular displacement for one revolution, which is two pi radians. So if we do that, we get 107.2 divided by two pi, which gives is 16.7 revolutions or that you could say the disc makes 16 whole revolutions. That's all for this video guys, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.